What was the weirdest experience you've had at work? Story 1. Used to work at a restaurant in Texas called Jim's. I was in high school and just got kicked out of the house for being a little poop balls and taking my aunt's car to see this chick in the middle of the night. Anyway, I had to make ends meet to pay for rent and food, so I started working the late shifts the restaurant would offer. There was a girl there who would only work those shifts because her boyfriend would work during the day and she needed the car to get to work. One day she showed up for like two hours late and she looked ticked off. I overheard her telling the manager her boyfriend wouldn't let her use the car, so she had to take the bus after a huge fight. Fast forward to the end of the shift, which was around 1am. She was calm now and the place was dead, so we were just standing around. Since she came in last, she would be the one to close the store, but since it was after the buses stopped, she asked me for a ride. I said no problem. She said she would make it up to me. The store closes and I'm waiting in my car for her to come out. The manager stayed to do paperwork. She gets in the car and just asks me if I ever had a bejesus. I had several up until this point, but still told her no. She grabs my dong and starts massaging it till it's hard, and then takes it out and starts sucking it. She did not have a gag reflex either, because I checked. Or maybe my dong is just too small. So I finish and zip up. I then say, well, where am I taking you? She said, don't worry, my boyfriend will be here in a minute. So I took off when she got out. Women are freaking ruthless. Story 2. Not very sensual, I guess, but when I first started working in the hotel industry, a Delta flight attendant took a liking to me and kissed me on the mouth unexpectedly when she was very drunk. After that, she went out for a smoke, and I told the bartender that she needed to be cut off, especially because I knew their crew had a morning flight in about five hours. She came in and went back to the bar, and watching from afar, I saw the bartender dump her beer and then point at me when she got ticked off. I began helping a VIP guest get up to his room, thinking that there was no way she could hop in the elevator before we ascended. False. She jumped in through the gap in the doors, Indiana Jones style, and screamed at me about how I ruined her night, all the while holding her middle finger up an inch from my face. She got out at a random floor, and after the doors closed, this Fortune 500 CEO guest just nonchalantly asked, What did you do, get her pregnant? Long story short, she was so drunk she couldn't remember her room number, caused a huge inconvenience for security, and wasn't listed as a guest at all in any of the rooms we had, because of the company contract. She eventually made it to the room in the early hours of the morning, but because of her behavior, our hotel property had to contact Delta, and I'm assuming she was let go or relocated, because I never saw her again with our regular flight crew. To answer the question, it's probably a toss-up between that experience or the time that a mother offered me $500 to do a strip show for her daughter's bachelorette party. Sounds like you got step one and step two on lockdown. Story three. Our CFO asked me to hack into the website of a photographer who had taken erotic pregnancy photos of him and his wife. Apparently, the photographer was pulling a bait and switch and had jacked up the price, and the CFO felt entitled to steal them for free. I was going to tell him it was unlikely I could just hack the site, because it's not like in the movies. But he showed me a sample image, and god dang, the image source was like gallery.cgi question mark file name equals img1234 blah 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 dot jpg and watermark equals true size equals small. What are the odds? I told him I could do it, but he said that due to the sensitive nature of the content, I couldn't work on my own computer or leave his office until it was done, and I had to swear to secrecy. Also, he never got up from the only chair, so I had to kneel at his computer, installing Perl and WGET and teasing out the numbering system for the pictures. 30 minutes later, I staggered back into the cubicle farm and my fellow programmers were like, what was the secret thing he wanted your help with? And I said, I'm not allowed to talk about it, but my knees are really sore and I'm going to go home early today. One of the guys literally did a spit take before I realized how that sounded. I never did live that down, although I did memorize the URL for the photos in case I ever needed those pics in an emergency. It's an emergency. I need those pics too. Story 4. Hi, I'm an EMT in the Boston area, and I just wanted to share this experience with you because it's kind of funny slash weird slash sad. So it starts as a typical 911 call. An elderly female fell, and there's a possible head wound. We arrive on scene to find fire is already there and inside so we proceed right in. The old woman lived alone and fell, hit her head, and cut it in the process and passed out. She had woken up, found her head was bleeding, and crawled to a phone to call her granddaughter for help. It was the granddaughter who called 911. 
The base of her walls looked like a horror movie, her fingers leaving bloody streaks down the hall where she had crawled. Patient lived and made it home fine, so the scene was not great. We find the grandmother and start to care, standard stuff. However, the granddaughter is there too, and she's just flirty as heck, and not subtle about it. She was hiking up her dress, past her <clears throat> lower extremities, and towards her lower abdomen, and she wasn't wearing any underwear. Also, the granddaughter was in her late 20s. I did my best to ignore her, but she was right there in my face. She was flashing myself, my partner, and the three other firemen while her grandmother was being backboarded and collared, bleeding right in front of her. Edit. Yeah, she was cute, but 85 is a little too old for me. Story 5. Mine is much tamer. Had a coworker that used to wear fairly short skirts to work daily. Every morning, she would pop by at the start of her day and sit on top of the desk right across from me. Every morning, I could see up her skirt because it was literally at eye level. Pretty weak compared to the rest of this thread. We had this new hire at my job a few years back. Pretty girl, young and curvy. She would dress the same way, showing about as much skin as possible. I think she used to be a stripper. Anyway, she was fine, but for whatever reason, she always had this chip on her shoulder about other female coworkers hating her and saying her butt was fake. One day, she got into an argument with another girl who was allegedly calling her a hoe with a fake body. Well, she got pretty ticked off. To address this, she got out of her seat, turned her back to me, the only male in the room at the time, and started slapping her butt in my face. She then began to bend over and twerk in front of me for probably a whole minute before sitting down and asking if that stuff looks fake. Needless to say, she didn't last long, but I got a lap dance at the office. Story 6. Not my work, but once a realtor that I wanted to hook up with took some keys to an apartment she was showing that day and did it with me inside of it, while he was on the clock. Freaking in an empty apartment? 10 out of 10. Would do it again. Finding out that the realtor you were trying to hook up with has a micro wiener, doesn't know how to use his tongue, and won't stop texting you after the fact because he thinks that one hookup means you two are bonded for life? 0 out of 10. Would not recommend. Don't let crazy put their dongs in you, folks. Edit. You are all pointing out that real estate agents don't work on the clock, and you're all correct. I wasn't entirely sure what his job was. As I said, it was a hookup, and I was not interested in getting to know him. All I know is I met him at the realty company's office he worked under in the middle of the day when they were expecting him to be working. He grabbed some keys under the guise that I was a client, and he was going to show me an apartment, and we left. He probably could have lost his job if anyone found out. Don't care, still boned. Awful lay, but still boned. Story 7. I was working at some big Canadian coffee chain when I was 16, and there was an annual meeting that the manager was organizing. I guess she couldn't find a babysitter for her son, so she brought him along. The problem with this is that he was actually a man in his 20s with the mental capacity of a toddler. The guy was easily a head taller than me, and would wander onto the floor behind the counter, would come back into the kitchen where I was baking donuts, and would simply take it and eat it in front of me with a poop-eating grin. Also, despite acting like a toddler, he apparently had a drive to um, get intimate and decided that pulling up women's shirts and grabbing their boobaloobaloobies and butts was a good way to pass the time. So here I am, a 16-year-old trying to do my god dang job, when the manager's 21-year-old mentally challenged son just decided to grope my butt very firmly. I turned to him and told him to not do that, and not to touch me. Why? He asked me. I'm a man. Yeah, I'm glad I'm out of there. The manager was a miserable old woman anyway. Should have sued Tim Hortons. Edit. Why is my Canadian top comment about Tim Hortons? For frick's sake. Story 8. When I was 18, I was doing IT work for a small financial services company slash accounting firm. Basically, I was converting all their paper files into electronic files and doing IT troubleshooting in the office. One of the bookkeepers was about 35, but pretty attractive, and she kept telling me she had trouble logging in from home, so I kept insisting she should bring her laptop into work, but she never did. Eventually, I went to her apartment to fix a simple issue, but she told me her laptop was at work. I was really annoyed, until she started giving me a bejesus. This continued as daily head in the filing room, and pounding it out in the stairwell till I got fired when rumors spread because she used to hook up with one of the managing partners and he got mad about it. Best job I ever had. I used to set the scanner to run on ultra-high scans, so a folder used to take 30 minutes to scan. 
I got paid to sit in front of a computer and watch Netflix while occasionally scanning folders and frequent get your dong sucked breaks. Quote, was about 35, but pretty attractive. <laughs> you say that like it's really old. Story 9. Posted this before. I used to be a store manager at a sneaker slash sporting goods store in the mall. One of my co-managers was doing it with one of my teenage, underage employees in that back stock room after the store closed on a regular basis. This was going on for several months, apparently. I found out when said teenager came to me and she said that my co-manager promised her a raise that she never got. I asked her why he said that he would give her a raise. That is when she told me about the stuff they were doing in the stockroom. I had to call the police and corporate about this. We arranged a sting with the help of the girl, as she acted out for the police to meet up with my co-manager after work. Basically, caught him with his pants down, to use the term. This is a meta not safe for work. You took something that wasn't safe for work, contacted authorities, and made more work. It's not safe for work work. Edit to say good on you for doing what you did and getting higher authorities involved. Story 10. This happened to a co-worker of mine while we taught together at an inner city high school. She went to the copy room one day and found two male students prison pounding each other. As she turned on the light and saw what was going on, they stopped, pulled up their pants, ran out of the room, and one smacked the papers she was holding out of her hand to stop her from following them. She didn't recognize them, and we didn't have cameras, but one of them left their book bag in the room, which helped her identify them. Two things stuck out to me about this event. The first was that this woman was truly one of the kindest, most benevolent, for the children type people this could have happened to. The second was that the kid giving it was a class bully, who called other guys maggot all the time, yet was giving it to one of the loudest, proudest gay kids in the school. Story 11. While working for a major company, I was working in a section of the building that should have been closed off, but my job function was overlooked and there was nowhere else to go. Basically a giant warehouse with a small office on the other side of it. Since the construction was going on my side of the building, I would enter through one of the side doors and immediately go to my office and sleep with the lights off. I had a hard hat and a high-vis vest, the same kind as construction, for lunches, so people would not question it. One day, I leave for lunch and came back to find out that the construction crews accidentally removed the support structure for the HVAC unit on the roof. It crashed through the roof and destroyed part of that small office. After that, I used one of the guest computers on the other side of the building to pretend to work. Story 12. The other night on a graveyard shift at my place of work, I was going from the front office to the kitchen to put some dishes away. To get to the kitchen, I decided to take the shortcut through the employee lounge. I opened the door and briskly hopped up a few stairs and heard the squeaking of someone getting up from the leather couch seat we have in the room. A co-worker of mine seemed particularly shocked and was standing there breathing heavily with a flushed face and neck. I asked how she's doing and while adjusting her blouse, she said fine, just waiting for some stuff to finish printing. I said, oh, okay, playing dumb, and went to the kitchen. On the way back to the front, I stopped by the copy machine and saw no copies being made, and am quite sure I walked in on my coworker touching herself at 4 a.m. Story 13. I was in the introductory meeting for the new director of our department. Everyone from our team, some project managers, and the director of HR were in the room. He started his slideshow when all quickly realized it was the wrong PowerPoint. It was corn. The first slide that came up was of a dude who had just finished on a chick, close up of the girl covered in jazz and a wiener. We all sat in stunned silence for a few moments before the new director frantically tried to do something. He was in full panic mode and just fumbled around for an even longer period of time before someone finally walked up to the projector and turned it off. He mumbled some apologies and we all awkwardly filed out of the room. We looked back in time to see the HR director close the conference room door, just the two of them. Story 14. I used to sell cell phones and service in undergrad. This was when smartphones were taking off in terms of speed and market penetration. One thing they told us to push was sports scores and such. They told us to get someone's favorite team and go to www.thescore.com and show them the site. I was not a big sports fan and immediately brain dumped this info. A month or two later, I had a customer in a football jersey and I was really super close to hitting my quota and getting a bonus, so I was really reaching. I was going to show him that site, but instead pulled up www.score.com, which was a corn site at the time. Maybe it still is. He liked that way more than football and bought the phone. This salesman is showing me corn. I like the cut of his jib. Story 15. 
worked for a lawyer in a shared office with a few other attorneys. One of the attorneys, Albert, was a grumpy, narcissistic butthole. Another one of the attorneys had a young female assistant named Isabel. We hit it off and got drinks after work a couple of times. She had a boyfriend at the time, but she told me she had been planning to break up with him for a while, and it seemed like something could definitely happen between us. The butthole lawyer, who was about 20 years older than Isabel, took her out to dinner, presumably as a professional guidance thing, but tried to kiss her. She was not having it. A couple weeks later, after she broke up with her boyfriend, we did it in Albert's storage room on top of his old case files. You got into her briefs on top of some of his briefs. Story 16. I wish this wasn't a true story. We were once having a discussion at work in which we couldn't remember who starred in the action movie Triple X, so I figured it was just a Googleable answer, so I type Triple X into my Google search on my work computer, but then I take a moment and stop and think, wait, that's not a good idea. And after a nanosecond of consideration, I solved my problem by adding the word movie. I googled Triple X movie on my work computer. It was Vin Diesel, by the way. Similar experience here. Coworkers and I were talking about buying new golf clubs. One mentioned that Dick's Sporting Goods was having a sale. Another guy says, oh, I should check the website and see if it's worth heading over there at lunch. Oh, dear God. Us. What? Him. Their website is not dicks.com. Story 17. We have a cleaning guy here at my work. He comes in every once a month or so to clean up the grounds and make sure everything is clean and looks nice. Well, one day he comes over to me and strikes up a conversation, and while he's talking to me, a tooth falls out of his mouth. At first, I thought, like, oh, that was some spit or something, or mucus maybe. He just stops talking and turns to me and says, I gotta go, my tooth just fell out. I was trying so hard not to laugh. He left and came back like 20 minutes later, told me he fixed his tooth with super glue, so it was okay. Story 18. I worked overnight as a convenience store clerk when I was 20, a drunk woman came in and was thirsty, but had no money. I offered her coffee for free since it's not inventoried, or some tap water, but she didn't want them. She wanted apple juice. She offered to flash me for some apple juice. I said, sure. She went off camera and lifted her top and bra for like three seconds. Three great seconds. She went and took two apple juices. I didn't mind. She left happy. I was happy. It was a good night, and all it cost was two apple juices on my tab. Hope she was a golden delicious and not a granny smith. Story 19. I did it with my girlfriend at the time. It was at GameStop after hours. We turned the camera off, but it still had that fully glass front wall, which was kind of cool, I guess. No one ever questioned why the camera was inexplicably off for a period of time. The counter was super uncomfortable, though. Not great, to be honest, but at least it's a story. No one ever questioned why the camera was inexplicably off for a period of time. Those things usually only get checked when something happens, and they need the footage. 30 seconds isn't usually enough for someone to notice the gap in footage. Story 20. I sell mattresses, and back when I first started, I had a woman come in that looked straight out of Jersey Shore. I built some rapport, and based on her needs, recommended she try a bed. Instead of just lying in the bed like a normal human being, she proceeded to climb in the bed on all fours, with her butt facing me, she looked over her left shoulder back at me and said, I feel like I could get a good bone on this bed. Being new, I wasn't really sure how to respond, so I just said, Yep, I'm sure you could. Story 21. People who use public restrooms are animals. I've cleaned poop off of a wall. Somebody pooped in the urinal. Found and disposed of poopy panties left in the woman's restroom. The toilet was clogged, and one or two people decided to poop on top of the clog. I had to help clean it. Then we had to call a plumber. All of those happened when I worked at a grocery store. Please be nice to those poor employees. Found and cleaned poop on the children's playground when I worked at a zoo. I'm sure there's more memories that I've suppressed. Story 22. I had a coworker who had never heard of Tub Girl. I told him how hot of a photo it was and that he should totally check it out when he gets home. Dude went over to his work computer and Googled it. As I was helping a customer out, the whole store paused momentarily in response to the echoing ah! that came from the back of the store. He stormed over and gave me the death glare. I reminded him that I told him to wait till he got off work. Story 23. Said this story before, so I'm just going to copy it. I have a coworker that I became close friends with, and we both have an immature sense of humor. During boring days, we would send each other weird stuff, so we always knew to use our phone and data instead of the PC to avoid HR calls. 
So one day I was feeling rather aroused and adventurous, so I went to the bathroom and took a pic of my boobaloobaloobies and got out and snapped it to him. The look on his face was priceless. Story 24. A woman I worked with used to walk up to me behind the service counter and fondle my dong and balls. She did this frequently while making eye contact and a wry, seductive smile. I took this as a sign she wanted to bone and made a pass at her. She recoiled and insisted that the touching wasn't sensual, but merely friendly. It's been over 10 years since this happened, and I still have no idea what the F was up with her. Story 25. My former boss used to bang hookers in the office next to mine. These were not nice hookers, but like meth heads. I could hear and smell everything, and they would walk past my office door 30 to 45 minutes later, all sweaty and stinky, and act like nothing happened. The one lady only had eight teeth in her whole head. I met her at our front gate, and she told me that she was from the bank, and was here to see my boss. Story 26. Was working with my mom's boyfriend at the time during summer break. He owned a glass installation business. He asked me to hand him a tool. I hadn't seen a concrete rivet gun before. Of course, I pulled the trigger being an idiot teen. Of course, the safety was bad. Him being a cheap butt on getting things fixed. Rivet barely missed his head. Was expecting something completely different until a rivet gun was mentioned. Story 27. Coworker number one. I was making out with this girl and I noticed she had no lips. Coworker number two. She had no labia? Coworker number one and I just glance at each other. How the heck did he get there from that? It was terrible, but not her. She was an angel, always smiling. That's because she had no lips, but her mouth was still very much in play. Story 28. I constantly see the naked bodies of people I work with. I'm a costume designer, and it's common for actors to change in front of me. I see bubaloobaloobies daily. Hmm, note to self. Become better with design and colors and clothes in general. Story 29. I work in a strip club as a waitress, and this one guy thought it was appropriate to try and stick his fingers into a dancer's hoo-ha. She punched him in the face, and she was berated by the managers for mistreating a customer. Unbelievable. So they're perfectly okay with sensual assaults of their workers? That's fricked up. Story 30. I've mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again. Mixing Dawn with bleach was standard protocol at this one place I worked. We did this in a small room with no ventilation. For the record, most dish soap has a form of ammonia as an ingredient. Oh, poop. Y'all made those cool crystals? Story 31. Years upon years ago, I put myself through college as a maintenance man at a public school in New York City. Dated a teacher at the school and did some mm, risky business stuff in the projector room above the auditorium. And the computer room. And the dark room in the photography slash art room. Coach Carr? Story 32. Worked for a catering company, and this particular party had belly dancers. While well, the belly dancers needed a place to change, the best place apparently being in the back room, where I was plating salads. One winked at me. It was a good day. Story 33. Back in my college days, I worked at a pizza hut as a delivery driver, and was sort of dating a girl I worked with. And we would pretty regularly fool around in the walk-in. More fun than it sounds, honestly, because walk-ins get super cold. Story 34. A crazy homeless lady came into my job. I'm pretty sure she was on crack. She walked up to the counter, pulled down her shirt, and said, Is my bra strap straight? Sadly, I saw more than her bra strap. She stole something. Story 35. I've walked in on my boss banging the secretary on the copier. In his defense, he was married to the secretary, and it was a Saturday when the office was usually closed. Yeah, but how do you think the copier felt being used like that? Story 36. I used to manage a charity shop. My girlfriend at the time came over once it was closed for the day, and we spent all evening dressing up in different outfits and banging each other's brains out. Old people passed away in those clothes. Story 37. Had a manager at a sub shop that would send me nudes. I swear, she could be a seppuku girl. Edit. r slash alt gone wild, guys. I'm sure you'll find something you like. That's how you properly motivate employees. Story 38. Years ago, a slightly drunk customer thought I was cute, and she walked away. She yelled, You to F or what? I was freaking mortified. I feel like you to F or what could be the new you are sucking? Story 39. A coworker was engaged and was talking about the cake toppers. She had no idea they made queer ones, went to a computer and googled gay toppers, was not getting the results she expected. Story 40. 
I got on a pallet that was lifted by a forklift that was in turn lifted by another forklift so I could work on something up high when our cherry picker was dead. Sounds like it's time to call OSHA on that one. Story 41. I once had to test our antivirus, so I was tasked with infecting a virtual machine with viruses. It was weird for an IT intern to be told to surf the worst of the worst corn sites. Story 42. Making whoopee with a coworker in the office. Watching a friend touch himself on a webcam during work. But Jesus is from a friend while I was on conference calls. You have some good friends. Story 43. I always assumed the waiting movie was a documentary. Rumor had it she'd been diagnosed with cancer and decided this was the way to go. Those two incidents were pretty not safe for work. Story 44. As an aroused teenager working at a supermarket, I jerked off in a bathroom stall once. Edit. Maybe it was more than once. I can't remember. Once? You've got to up those numbers. Story 45. I got a bejesus in the storage room at work at my last job. Girl had one amazing bubble butt. Could suck the chrome clean off a bumper. Story 46. Walked in on someone jerking it in the commuter's lounge. Made awkward eye contact on the way out, and they never even stopped. Haunts me to this day. Story 47. A good old handy J from a coworker in an open cubicle office during work hours. She was showing me how to use the new software. Hardware for the win. Story 48. Did it with a customer in the disabled toilets when I worked in a bar. She was sober and up for it, so why the heck not? Which one of you was disabled? Story 49. I had a coworker at my second job ever with Radio Shack that would offer bejesuses in the back room for 50 bucks. Never did though, but a coworker did. Story 50. Someone once misspelled in a SQL query, woman count. Obviously they misplaced the O. Select count woman from wives where status equals X and personality equals count woman. Story 51. People not wearing lab coats or gloves when working with biohazardous materials. Wear your PPE scientists. Story 52. The top rated one now is about a guy with poop on his shirt. So somebody's corn, but not my corn. Story 53. Someone brought a safe in for delivery and Aurora told them we didn't order a safe. So they left. Story 54. Surprised at the lack of restaurant workers posting here. Food service is basically Burning Man. Story 55. Was a teenage lifeguard for an indoor pool. Wild lifeguard parties were held after hours. Story 56. A lot of these comments in this thread are already starting to sound like corn fantasies. Story 57. Morning bejesuses under my desk. Did your neck get sore? Bannon. Story 58. Saw a coworker slap another coworker's bum in front of me. Story 59. Our SQL Server databases are auto-commit by default. Story 60. I once forgot to put a dollar sign in my VLOOKUP formula. Story 61. Doing it in the office every Friday night. Story 62. Reading this thread at work. Story 63. Chick Titty fell out. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.